As flight simulation enthusiasts, we've heard it all before. Marketing hype after marketing hype. Having just installed the 4090, I decided to put it to the test, DLSS 2 vs DLSS 3. Welcome to the Sim Hangar, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. Let's start by turning the clock back briefly to a few days ago. This is my 3090, Sim Update 11 Beta, DX12, 4K and Ultra Settings. DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling on Quality Mode. Take a peek at the top right hand corner and you can see the frame counter. I'm in the mid to upper 50s, sometimes getting over 60. Just below the frame counter and the resolution information, we can see by and large we're limited by the main thread. The main thread limitation of course is your CPU. Shown above are my system specs. The only change I've made is I've upgraded to an RTX 4090. It's the ASUS Tough Gaming Card, and I'm not running in overclock mode. I'm using the latest graphics driver at time of recording. In the NVIDIA control panel, texture quality and power management are both set to high performance. So let's now compare performance between the RTX 3090 and RTX 4090. Both have 24GB of VRAM. The settings for both are exactly the same. The only difference between the two is hardware accelerated graphic scheduling is off on the 3090 and on as it's required for the 4090 in DX12. We'll need this to enable DLSS 3. Currently the 4090 is running in DLSS 2 mode and at first glance, let's be honest, performance is disappointing. But personally, I wasn't surprised by this and why? Both are limited by the main thread, not by the GPU, it's the CPU holding it back. I have a 10900K and it's just about as much as it can muster at this point in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For those of you that may be interested in comparisons in TAA mode, again, all ultra settings, the 3090 was giving me 46 FPS. So the transition to DLSS has provided 10 to 15 extra FPS. The 4090 here not giving much of an uplift. So with the 4090, is this the best my system can do? No, it can do much better taking advantage of DLSS 3. We're done with the 3090 for now. Let's turn on DLSS 3. Under general options, we'll choose the graphics tab. And for all tests, I've set global rendering quality at ultra. And here we can have a very quick glance through the settings. They are the default settings, so I won't bother running through them individually. All comparisons are based on the settings here. To enable DLSS 3, you have to have hardware accelerated graphics scheduling on, as mentioned, and DX12. Then select NVIDIA DLSS frame generation, and we'll click that to on. We're now in DLSS 3 mode. Let's go back and give it a test and see if we can register any form of improvement. Before we discuss the results, let's understand what DLSS 3 does. It works on very much the same principle as used in virtual reality, that is, reprojection mode, which inserts synthetic frames to create better performance and a smoother overall experience. And I can immediately feel that, but I can't see it in the FPS counter. And that's because these additional frames are created by the GPU, not the CPU, so it doesn't see them. So our inbuilt FPS counter is pretty useless at this point. But you can measure performance by using a third-party application such as MSI Afterburner. I've now activated that application and we can see we're running at between 120 and 130 frames per second, occasionally topping 140. In effect, it's doubled our FPS output. The addition of the synthetic frames smooths the transition from one frame to the next. We can see here, and I've been flying for a while, my GPU is running at uh, 55 degrees C, so pretty cool. And my 4090 is drawing about 280 to 290 watts. So at this point, pretty much the same as my 3090 was drawing. My CPU is running at uh, about 63 degrees Celsius, again fairly cool and I'm running at 5 GHz. Next to the frame counter is the frame time, and it's between 8 and 9 milliseconds. But we don't need the inbuilt frame counter anymore, so I'll turn that off. 
So the big question is, are these real frames? Does it really make a difference? Well, yes, they do make a big difference. And what I'm particularly impressed with is the visuals. I cannot visibly see a difference between DLSS 2 and DLSS 3. And bear in mind, we're flying in a fairly high density area. And we'll jump into PMDG 737 and test it out with DLSS 3 as well and see what sort of results we get. Here you can judge the performance for yourself. There's no micro stutters, no pauses, lots of detail, smooth flying and I think DLSS 3 is amazing technology. Who thought I'd have 130 or 140 FPS in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Let's change up the weather and let's see what happens. Let's add in a little bit of rain I think. Now change the weather preset to overcast. Let's see what happens to the FPS and see if we can get some rain on the windshield. That looks pretty murky, I think that's going to do nicely. Frame rate hasn't really changed a lot, stayed pretty much where it was between 120 and 130. The 4090 you'll note is not drawing anything near the power that we expected to see. 350s, 400s and maybe above. Seems to be sticking between the 280 and 290 watts. Typical rain everywhere except where my aircraft is. Let's use the wonders of video editing and get into some rain. That's better, we've got a little bit of rain now. In fact it's pouring down and frame rates remain fairly good. Remaining between the 120 and 130 mark. Let's now change the time of day, let's get into night and see how DLSS 3 handles that. Still very limited visibility and it's still raining. And the FPS has remained constant and the flying seems very smooth indeed. No additional stutters or pauses evident. And whilst we're here we can have a quick look at the clarity in terms of the instrumentation. Bear in mind again I am at 4K and I am in Sim Update 11 Beta. But I'm having no problem reading the instrumentation, the letters and numbers. And if anything, I'd say the blurriness is far less. In fact, it's hardly evident at all. I'm not saying it's gone because I haven't tested enough, but it's not evident here. MSI Afterburner is one of the most respected utilities available. I mention this for you skeptics out there. Let's turn DLSS 3 off and see what we record in terms of FPS. Frame generation is now off. Back to Sim and we can see MSI Afterburner is recording 58, 57 FPS and so on. Put on the InSim frame counter so we can compare and they're much of a muchness. Between half and probably one FPS between them and that's probably a time delay issue, nothing more. I saw very little evidence of any artifacting, which was a pleasant surprise to be honest. Here I'm putting it under max pressure, all settings at ultra. This is the amazingly detailed Brussels airport from Aerosoft. And I'm in the Kodiak 100. All known to be quite a big FPS hitter. My 3090 would struggle in this setting. For me in DLSS 3, well it's super smooth. Welcome to PMDG 737-700. And we're inbound Heathrow. The 737 along with the Phoenix A320 on some of the heavy hitters and most complex aircraft in the sim. For external views it's varying but between 110 and 130 odd FPS, occasionally touching 140. Once we jump into the cockpit the FPS drops to between 80 and 90 FPS, topping out at about 100 or so. This is a great performance considering photogrammetry is on, settings are ultra, Highly complex aircraft. These quite clearly are the highest FPS we've ever seen in the sim in an aircraft such as this. In my personal opinion, well it's an amazing achievement. DLSS 3 in my book, well it's a clear winner. And I'll be using it going forward without doubt. Coming into London I did pick up one or two micro pauses, but nothing significant. And of course we've got to bear in mind that DLSS 3 is brand new and we can expect further refinements and improvements as time goes by. Future optimizations, well I think they're inevitable, but what a great start this is. 
Please bear in mind, of course, that your mileage may vary and will very much depend on what CPU you have. If I had an Intel 12th or 13th gen, well, my performance would probably be better. But, to be honest, this is good enough for me. Currently on Windows 10, but I am considering upgrading to Windows 11 shortly. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very much for joining me today. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay well, look after yourselves, I'll see you again soon, and bye for now.